Let's see where they are. Also. Well, the Rebbe has a very interesting sikh about this. And it says, what these are the these are the five pupils of Rebbe. Rebbe Yochanan ben Zaka had a lot of pupils. Why only these five? Now, Kahati gives an answer, and he says, these were five of the best. Hamisha told me that with Rebbe Yochanan ben Zaka, we're now in the second chapter of Pirki Avot, on the eighth Mishnah, Mishnah Shmuel, Mishnah Chet. Right, Rabbi Yochanan ben Zaka Kibel Mehil of Hashem. We did this. Who are you Omrim Lomanat the Torah? If you learned a lot of Torah, don't hold any good to yourself. Kilakach Natsarta, because that's why you were created. And now we say Hamisha Talmidim Hoyel Rabbi Yochanan ben Zaka. Five pupils were to Rabbi Yochanan ben Zaka. And if you look down in the commentary in the Kahati, he says these were the best of the pupils. The Rabbi of the Lubavitcher Rabbi doesn't say that. The Rebbe Lubavitch says that these five pupils, these were the heads of five different groups of pupils. There was, he had five different types of pupils, Rebbe Yochanan and Zakkai. It could be that he had hundreds of pupils. I mean, the whole, in the end, he was the one that, after the destruction of the temple, he was the one that carried, he led the Jewish people into the exile. He was the one that made Yavna. So he was the head. So he had a lot of pupils. Why does it say he had five? Because he had five general groups of pupils. Each one had their own nature. And these five, what five, what natures were they? These five people that he brings, Rabbi Elezer, Ben Hurkanus, and etc., those were the heads of these five. And the people who had personalities that were similar to these five they <coughs> gravitated to them. So who were these five? There was Rabbi Eliezer ben Eliezer ben Hurkanas, Rabbi Yeshua ben Hananel, Hanania, Rabbi Yosef Akon, Rabbi Shem ben Nisanel, and Rabbi Eliezer ben Aruch. But these were the five. Okay, the Rebbe takes, let's just take an example here. Uh, well, well, let's go through them and we'll see. Now, interesting, uh, this is interesting. Because each one of these five, he asks, what's a good thing to do? And what's a bad thing? What's a bad thing you have to keep away from? And each one gave his answer that is typical to his nature. So let's go through it in general. And then we'll go back and we'll match up these different answers to the different people. Now, if you remember last time we said, Rabbi Yochanan and Zakkai praised each one of these pupils with a different praise. And the uh, Kahati expra- explained what these praises meant. And now we're going to see what these praises, a person that has this, these uh, character traits, like each one of these praises, and we'll go over it right now. What is his way of looking at life? So let's have, let's have a look. There were five pupils. Let's go back to the Mishnah. Good. Hamisha Talmidim, there were five pupils to Rabbi Yochanan and Zakkai. Elohim, these are they. Let's see, maybe I can get on. Let's see, here we go. Which, which Mishnah are we on? We are. Eight or nine? We are, we are in Mishnah eight. Mishnah eight. Here, this is the Mishnah here. Right here, that's in the picture. Can I control this? No, I can't. Okay, but that this is the Mishnah. It says, Rabbi Yochanan ben Zaka, Kibbam Hilma, Yishama, Huaya Omer. If you learn a lot of Torah, don't hold any good to yourself because that's where you're created. Okay, Hamisha Talmidim. You with me? Can you see the page? Can you see the page? Five pupils there were to Rabbi Yochanan ben Zaka. And these are the pupils Rabbi Elazar ben Horkanus, Rabbi Yeshua ben Hanania, Rabbi Yossi Akon, Rabbi Shimon ben Nasana, Rabbi Elazar ben Aruch. Okay, these are five different ways of approaching the Torah. Who I ask you with a top line, who I am on a Shevchan. Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai, he would enumerate their praise. He would praise each one of them individually. Rabbi Lezer ben Horkanus, Boyer Sud. He is a, uh, 
what do you call it? An insulated uh, wine pit. Sheinu mabetipa that it does not lose a drop. Right? They used to make the wine, press the wine in this big sort of a what do you call it? A pit, a vat. A deep cistern. A cistern. And this is a cistern that was lined on the inside with uh, with cement or whatever, so that it wouldn't lose a drop. Of course, that's the type of a pupil that learns Torah and never forgets anything. Anything that he learns, he doesn't forget. Rabbi Yeshua says, Ashrei Yolatato, happy is the one who gave birth to him. Happy is his mother. The ideal child. Rabbi Yossi is a chassid. What's a chassid? A person that does more than what he's supposed to. Rabbi Shimon ben Nassanel, he feared sin. Rabbi Elazar ben Aruch, Rabbi Elazar ben Aruch, that finally it says that he's going to be greater than all of them. He is a mayan amitkaber. He is like a wellspring that increases all the time. He's a wellspring of Torah ideas that increases all the time. Okay, Huwe Omer. Rabbi El Eliezer ben Rabbi El Yochanan ben Zakkai said, "Im hayu kol chachmei Yisrael b'kaf moznayim." If all of the wise men were in a scale, on one side, the Eliezer ben Hurkanus was on the other side, he would tilt all over. He was worth all of them. Abba Shaul said, in the name of Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai, that here Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai once say that if all the pupils that he had, all the Torah scholars were on one side of the scales. And Rabbi Eliezer ben Horkanus, that he was the greatest of all, that he was with all of them. Then, Imoim, Rabbi Eliezer ben, and Rabbi Azar, but Rabbi Eliezer ben Arach was on the second side, he would tilt it all over. He was equal to all of them. Okay, what does this mean? Let's look, let's have a look and see. Come. Okay, we did this before. Here it says that really Hill had Seven, 70 pupils, and 80 pupils, I'm sorry. Let's go further down. I'm not, it's not working for me. I can't scroll down, I'm sorry. Further, 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 good, good, good. Uh, that's it. No, there we go. Yes, go further. Okay, I, I think we did this, I think. We did all this, right. We did this. He was a chassid. He did more than what he was supposed to do. Rabbi Shem ben Nasanel, he feared sin. And Rabbi Lezer ben Aruch, he was a Mayan Amit Gaber. He was like a wellspring that increased all the time. And more and more. Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai, did we do this? I think we did this yesterday. Yes, we did. And then he would, okay, here we go. No, no, ne next. Yes, all right. That's right. Okay, good. Very good. Next, Mishnah, Tet. Omer Lamb, Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai said to his pupils, So go out, or U and see, Ezu derech yashara she yibade she yidabek she yidbak bo adam. Go and see what is the best straightest way that a person should cling to. What is the best way? Okay, you, you have the text over here. I'm going to read from my text that's over here. Okay, let's start off. You said go out and see what the world is about. Oh, shame. Oh, shame. Let's, uh, turn Steve, this. could you turn off your mic, please? Could you turn off uh, Mr. Mr. Lack? You turn off okay, your there's two possibilities in that case, and that's why I wanted to try to head it off. One possibility is that everybody invests in Mute everybody, please. Uh, please. Right. The other possibility. Wait, 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 I, I, think, I, I think only you can. I got it. No, no, I did it. I did it. Yeah, 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 I did. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, ready? Here we go. Omar Lamb, he said to them, so go out and see what is the the best way that a person should live, that a person should cling to. Rabbi Eliezer, Omar, Rabbi Eliezer said, I am tova, to have a good eye. Good eye is very, very important. Says that there, what does it mean a good eye? Good eye 
there's evil eye. You know what evil eye? Ayin hara. I know we say to ourselves, "Bli ayin hara." What is ayin hara? Ayin hara is jealousy. Jealousy is ayin hara. You look at a person, you say, "Why does he deserve a nice house? Why does he deserve this? Why is he You're jealous of the person?" Ayin or kina, like they say, ayin hara. According to Judaism. Uh, good is stronger than bad. A little bit of light pushes away a lot of darkness. <clears throat> so that's what Rabbi Elazar said, having a good eye, looking at someone with a good eye and thinking, well, this person should have more, but someone's succeeding. Say, what are you succeeding? He's a, he's a millionaire. That's he, a Jew. He's a Jew. He deserves billions. He does a, but you see someone succeeding, not to be jealous. God has enough for everybody. <clears throat> I am Tova. Let's look and see what the, uh, the Kehati says. I am Tova. She is Tabek Adam Bamash Yeshlo. A person should suffice with what he has. Biyismach the Tova Zulaso. And he should be happy that other people have even more than he does. Sha Adam Kaze, a person like this, Alhuv is loved. And everybody likes him because he doesn't have a jealous eye. And everyone is loved by him. And loving others, being positive, this is the source of all good midos. So talk about Ahavas Israel, Ahavas Israel, loving every Jew. The essence of loving every Jew is just appreciating what everybody is and what everybody has. In general, this is a very important thing in Judaism. We're going to see there's something more important. There's something more important, a very important thing in Judaism, and that is to be happy what, with what you've got. If you're not happy with what you've got, you'll never be happy with what you get. And to look at another person, I, tell, I think I said this before, there's the medrash that there was a dog walking along the... Um, the road, what is it? It's in the Gomorrah in, in Sota. It doesn't bring this example though. It says that a person that that um, lusts after th possessions of others as he doesn't get what he lusts after and he loses what he's got. And it brings the example of a dog walking across a bridge with a bone in his mouth. And it happens to be that this dog looks in the water, looks over the edge of the bridge in the water and he sees, what does he see in the water? He sees a dog with a bigger bone than his bone. Of course, he sees only his own, his refle own reflection. So he thinks to himself, what does that dog deserve a bigger bone than me? And he opens up his mouth to get it. And what the bone that he has in his mouth, he loses. And what he wants, he doesn't get. Having a good eye. That is what Rabbi Eliezer, Eliezer ben Hurkanus said. What did Rabbi... I'm sorry. Yes, Rabbi Yelizu. Rabbi Yeshua, Rabbi Yeshua ben Hananiah. What did he say? Let's look down in the, this. It said, what did he say? Rabbi Yelizu ben Hananiah said, Yeshua ben Hananiah, Chaver Tov. To be a good friend. Pretty important. Let's look and see what Kahati says. Chaver Tov. Shiyiyah Adam Chaver Tov L'Rayav. That a person should be a good friend to his acquaintances. V'zem may vi otoli de yachas shel chiva after chalasher brius. When he senses what another person needs, and if a person is lacking something, he tries to help him out. If another person is happy, he rejoices with him. If another person is sad, so he is also in pain. That's called a good friend. Midra Shmuel, in the name of Rab, Rabbi Yehuda, Lirma, Rabbi Yonah, Rabbi Yonah. All right, that was Rabbi Eliezer said a good eye. Rabbi Yeshua said a good friend. Rabbi Yossi. Rabbi Yossi. What did Rabbi Yossi say? The Cain Omer. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, we didn't finish the last one. The Cain Omer Rabbi, Yehu, Rabbi Akiva said to be a Chaver Tov. Love your friend like yourself. Zikhal Gadol Batora. To be a good friend. In other words, to love others as you love yourself. Rabbi Yossi. What did Rabbi Yossi say? Rabbi Yossi Akoin, what did he say? Shachentov, to be a good 
neighbor. Good neighbor. Well, that's the same thing as being a good friend, isn't it? No, let's look and see. That a person should be a good neighbor. Second, here we go. That a person should be a good neighbor. To all of his neighbors. By means of this, he will be. He will learn and he will be loved by them. Ram, but the few Rabbim, unfortunately, most people say, "No, what Rabbi Yeshua said, Rabbi Yeshua, he she yikanelo chavertov, not that you should be a good friend, but that you should get yourself a good friend." Like we said, kanelo chachaver. That he should take advice from him. And that his good friend should tell him if he's making any mistakes or doing or has bad character traits. That And he should encourage him to do good things. That's what a good friend is for. The king Kavanis Rabbi Yossi is she stadl shielo shachentov. Not that you should be a good neighbor. Of course you should be a good neighbor. But what you should try to find yourself a good neighbor. Because your next door neighbor sees what you do on your own and he can correct you. Okay, Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Shimon ben... Let's see one second, where is this? Rabbi Shimon. What did Rabbi Shimon say? <clears throat> Rabbi Shimon ben Nisanel, Haroa Esanolad. What do we say Rabbi Shimon was? Rabbi Shimon was a person that was Yirechid, right? He was the fear of sin, wasn't it? Rabbi Shimon ben Nisanel was Yirechid. He was the fear of sin. Okay, now let's see what this has to do with his personality, right? We had already, what was Rabbi uh, Eliezer ben Hurkanas? We said about him that he was a pit a, what is it, a wine a cistern that had no holes in it, held everything. And what did he say? What did Rabbi Eliezer ben Horkonus say? Let's look over here and say Rabbi Eliezer ben Sir. He said you have to have a good eye. What's that connected to being a uh, pit that all the Torah stays in it? We'll see. We'll go back to this. Then we have Rabbi... Uh, Yes, Rabbi, Rabbi Yeshua ben Hanania. Rabbi Yeshua ben Hanania. It said that he was happy as the one who gave birth to him. What did he say? <clears throat> that you have to have be a good friend. Rabbi Yossi a Kohen. <clears throat> what did Rabbi Yossi a Kohen? He was a Hasid. What did he say? Be a good neighbor or get yourself a good neighbor. Now we have Rabbi Shimon. What did Rabbi Shimon say? Rabbi Shimon ben Nisanel. He was, it says, a yire chet. He was, he feared sin. What did he say? Rabbi Shimon Omar, a roi es one who sees what's going to be. Now, what does it mean? We had that before. Ezehu chacham, a roi es anolad. Shuhu shokel bedato varoa be'en e rocho that he weighs in his mind and tries to see with his spirit, if you want to call it his conscience, ma'alul he valid, what might come out, mimase from the deeds, shu omed lasot that he's going to do. Raya zu monas desin. This prevents a person, me'asot davar shatot sov ra'ot mazikot. This stops a person from doing things that could be damaging to himself and damaging to others. And this encourages him. That the outcome is good and beneficial. So the Rebbe, he, 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 he takes this and he, he analyzes it. What do we say about Rebbe Shimon? That he was a person that he had fear of sin. 
fear of sin. Yurechet. It's not that he was afraid of the of the punishment. He was afraid of the sin itself. Now, what is this? What is exactly a sin? We said before that a person should weigh out the reward of a sin against its loss and the reward of a mitzvah against its loss. What's the reward of a, of a sin? It feels good. You get something immediately, you get immediate results, you could even get tremendous success, right? A person lies, steals, he makes money, he's successful. But what happens in the end? In the end, if it doesn't get paid in this world, it's, people discover who he really is, but for sure he lied. Spiritually, he's lacking, something bad happened. On the other person, a person, on the other hand, a person that is spiritually does what's right, does a mitzvah. So the mitzvah could mean, whether it's a positive commandment or a negative commandment, that he'll lose money now. He won't have the pleasure that he wanted to have. He would like to eat this steak, but it's not kosher. He would like to go to, who knows, a movie, whatever, but it's Shabbos, he can't go. So he'll suffer now for what he's doing. He would like to steal, but he has to be honest. He could get away with it, no problem. But what can he do? He's got to be honest. He makes a big war in his mind. What should he do? He says, weigh it out. A year a person who fears sin means he fears the sin itself. He doesn't fear what the punishment is going to be. He doesn't even care if he's going to benefit. If this is something that God doesn't want to do, so he doesn't do it. That's what year a That was Rabbi Shimon ben Asanel. What does Rabbi Shimon ben Asanel say? He says, a raw as a nolet, a person who sees what's going to be born. So this fits together with his idea of having yirechit, to be a fear of the sin itself. And finally, we have the last one, Rabbi Lazar ben Arach, that he was, says that he was equal to all the others. That's what Rabbi Yochanan and Zakkai said. Rabbi Elazar said, lave told, having a good heart. Having a good heart. What does this mean to have a good heart? The others said pretty good things, right? They said, yeah, the person has a, has a good eye, that he has, he's a good friend, that he's a good neighbor, that he sees what's what's the outcome going to be. A good heart. <clears throat> what is a good heart? Shekol midotav. Let's look at the, at the uh, do we have it here? Yes. And our, yeah, there it is. Yes, yes, okay. Here, Leifto, right at the very top of your page. Shakal midotav shall adam that everything that comes that a person does should mikron the source of them is in his heart. Omisha libotov and a person that has a good heart. Call midotav tovot. All of his emotions are good. What does it mean a good heart? A person that have a good eye means he looked at everybody in a good way and etc. A heart usually is is the source of emotions. Emotions are expressions. Expressions. A person can look at everybody in a positive way, but he keeps it to himself. He keeps it to himself. He can be a good neighbor, he can be a good friend, but he keeps it to himself. He's quiet. A good heart means he goes out. You can see it. He radiates positiveness. He radiates all these other things that we had before. He's got a place in his heart for everybody. He sees the, uh, the, the he feels the positiveness. I heard a story about Rabbi Mendel Kurtafas. I did not hear him say this. There's a lot of things I did hear him say, but this is not one of the things. And he said that um, to another chassid, this is the story, that everybody likes me. In, in, in Hebrew, there's really no word for like. In Yiddish, it's what everybody loves me. And you have otcha. In Hebrew, and you have lib for there. I love. He said, everybody loves me. So the other chassid said, what type of a thing to say is that everybody loves you? Well, what do you care if everybody loves you? How do you know that everybody loves you? How do you know a thing like that? He said, because I love everybody. Because if you look positively at everybody, so it means that eventually that wakes up. It's like my and the pun and it wakes up. If everybody even doesn't like me, but at least that aspect of me, everybody will like. Everybody will like. So he says, that's the best of all. And people that don't there, listen, there's people that are selfish, there are people that didn't like the Lubavitcher Rebbe, <laughs> there are people that didn't like Moshe. <laughs> Eventually, everybody went against Moshe, right? There was nobody more positive, and you know, how Moshe prayed for the Jewish people after they worshiped the golden calf. He prayed for them for what it was the 40 days, he went on Mount Sinai that the God should forgive them. So no, no more, more positive than that. And nevertheless, when Korach stood up, which was, this was way after the, 
the sin of the golden calf, where Korach stood up as everybody just went with Korach and said, let's go against Moshe. So nevertheless, we have to try to do as much as we can. And the best attitude that a person has is a good heart. So if you find that you're, the world makes you depressed or angry or bitter, or and, and the world can do it. And it could be that you're right 100%. But nevertheless, you're missing out on a good heart. A good heart is worth more. Having a bad heart does more damage to you than it does to the... Uh, then the world can do. A person can do more damage to himself than to others. So having a good heart. Omer Lahem said, Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai to his pupils, Ro'ani, as Divrei Elazar ben Oroch, I see the words of Rabbi Elazar ben Oroch, Nirim li Divrei Rabbi Elazar ben Oroch, his words are better. Sheikh Bichlal devorav Divrei Because included in his words are your words. Right? One of the pupils said, that you have to uh, see what's the, the, the outcome. One said you have to have a good eye, you have to be a good friend, you have to be a good neighbor. And he said you have to have a good heart. says, I see that what he said, having a good heart is the best. Why? Let's see. Shat kal toli believe. Because everything depends on a person's heart. Omishu baal leiv tov, and a person that has a good heart, knows he's always positive, somehow or other, he always manages to be positive, even in the worst situations. Call me sub yesharos, and that means his personality is going to be straight. and all of his values are going to be proper. The nimsa, and it'll come out. Sameach bechelko that he's always happy with what he has. Vedato nocha mitovas abrios, and he is happy with the goodness of others. He likes to see other people succeed. He likes to see other people successful. Then it comes out that he has all these other things that we talked about. He also has a good eye. He also is a good friend. He's also a good neighbor. Or he'll, he'll uh, accumulate around him good friends and good neighbors. And also he'll always try to see what is the outcome, what's going to be born. If he has a good heart, then he's always going to want that the best should be, not only now, but also in the future. That there shouldn't come any bad thing from what, not to him or to anyone else. And this is what's called This is what's called, it's good for him. And it's good for all the creations, for everyone in the world. So some people say, tov l'briut, also good for your health. So that's Rabbi Elizabeth and Arach says, you have to have a good heart. It's a good thing to, to work on, to have a good heart, to be positive, not to let the world get you down. That's half of it. And the other half is, yes, that you should get the world up. Always have a good word to say to others, a good thought, a good deed if you can help others never to do anything negative, to be positive, have a good heart. Okay, now we are going to learn the laws of milk and meat. Right, today we learned about Pesach Sheni. We learned just now Mishnah. And now we're going to learn the laws of milk and meat. You're all going to be rabbis in